Hey, Jeff Howard here at kiteboarding.com, and today I want to talk about lines, fly lines, the lines that are connected to your kite from your bar. We have so many questions about those, and I want to see if I can answer those and give you some more schooling or education about fly lines. Now, the main thing to understand about fly lines is all of them are made from a Spectra or Dyneema. What is the difference? It's a name brand. One is branded in Europe and one is branded in the US. It is a man-made fiber. It is very, very strong, but it has a very, very low melting point. So what I mean by a low melting point is if you want to get into a battle with another line set, you want to make sure that it's not cotton or Kevlar or some other type of line other than Spectra. The reason is, is it will take a $200 set of lines and if you're out there flying and you hit one of those nice little kitty kites with a cotton line on it as you're running down the beach or anywhere you're close the cotton line will cut through your spectra like it was butter so it has a very low melting point so when the line is against itself you will not have those type of problems back in the day we used to fly on Kevlar I remember racing kite buggies on Kevlar and Kevlar can only be flown with Kevlar but the problem is Kevlar has a a uh, higher stretch at breaking point and that's going to bring me into another category of about lines and why spectra so spectra has a lot of people will call it and contact us and say my lines have stretched out well let me tell you spectra fibers do not stretch until four percent at breaking point that is something to understand if people go well, what do you mean at breaking point so when you're pulling that tinsel of spectra not the braid a tinsel of spectra is like this little hair. So you see all these little tiny things in here. This is like, uh, it looks like almost a, a spider's web. Little tiny fiber of spectra is right there. So when that, spect when that fiber is being pulled, at breaking point, it will stretch 4%. So let me get back into that because a lot of people talk about stretch. Fly lines really don't stretch. What they do is they settle in. So back in the day, we used to have a lot of fly lines. When first people came out with Spectra, it was the ultimate to use to fly kites on. You didn't want any stretch. You want the feel of steering that kite. Well, what happened is, is to get the strength, you've got to braid this stuff. So the fibers of a braid, so if I take one of these lines, I don't know if you can see it. So if I push it together from end to end here, you will see how it's all braided together. Braiding machines, take these fine fibers and braid them in into an inner lock. Now what was happening is without any kind of treatment on these lines, they will relax. All fly lines will relax at some point. We try to reduce it as much as possible because once a line is pulled and tensioned, it's all now run through a treatment to keep it in that, as much as you can, locked into that braid. When you do do that, there is almost no lockdown. It's not stretch. It is called lockdown of the fibers and relaxing and locking back down. As lines wear, that coating will wear off and fly lines will start to begin either loosening up, getting dirt inside of them, and feel like there's a little bit of stretch in them. But it's not stretch again. It's the fibers locking down. So keep that in mind. That is very important. A lot of people say, my lines have got stretch. No, they've got lockdown of the fibers. Spectra doesn't break until 4% or doesn't stretch to 4% at breaking point. So this stuff is amazing. And again, this is how they buy it. They buy it in these little tiny fibers like this. And what happens is, is they'll come off and they'll take however many of these and they'll twist them and braid them. And then you've got that individual braid that if you push these lines together, that's what you see in your fly lines. So that's a little bit of information about Spectra and Dyneema and uh, talk about how it really doesn't stretch it's just locked down to the fibers and every line set will do that kite uh, kite manufacturers try to reduce it as much as possible so when they manufacture a bar such as this, this is a duotone when these are built they're pre-set up pre-loaded so when you get it we hope that there's a little bit of settling in your front lines will always settle in uh, Nash they went up to a bigger line and try to reduce that settling in because it highly affects the flying of your kite. The more tuned the kites are, the more effective the fly lines, if your front lines are longer, or outsides are longer, how it will affect that kite. Now, I wanna talk about different types. Um, 
and breaking strengths. So when you get into breaking strengths of the fly line, the truth is most people out there will never ever break a fly line under normal conditions. So if it's all set up on your bar, there is no wear marks on your fly lines or whatever it is, you are not going to break those fly lines. Most of these, like Nash, they've gone up. Uh, Slingshot also has done it. A couple other brands have done it. Their front lines, they've gone up bigger and bigger and bigger. These things are pretty close to a thousand pound breaking strength. That's per line. So in most cases, you're not going to break that line. If a line breaks, we have normally found that there was a wear mark, a cut mark, a rock, a shell, a wear and tear. We've seen people like leave it on their bars like this and they throw them in their cars or on the ground in this hard surface and you get a wear marks right here where you wind your lines. That is basically where you're gonna get your breaking of a fly line. Um, the other things I wanna talk about is why, a lot of people ask, why are they sleeved and then some are not sleeved? This fly line right here on the Duotone has a pigtail. I like this concept. Almost every brand is turning this direction. Some are not, a little here and there, but let me tell you, this is a non-sleeved spectral line. The reason that you put sleeving on a spectral line is wear and tear. Again, back to that low melting point and wear and tear. If you uh, tie this on or connect it on to your pigtail and you have sand in here, if the spectra was touching that, you could really cause some wear of each one of those little tiny little fibers and each one used to keep nicking away or reduce the strength of that line. So it is very important, you know, to have something to buffer that and take that load where you direct connect. One is by sleeving onto the fly line such as this one. It's stitched, it puts a Dacron sleeving over the top of it and that takes the wear and tear. This one here, you will see that this is the end of a Duotoner North, and there's a lot of brands that do this as well. Here's the end of the fly line, and then they put the wear and tear on a pigtail, such as this. So if you get wear and tear, all you gotta do is replace the pigtail. If you get wear and tear here, you've either gotta send this in to a shop such as us, and we recut and stitch a new piece of sleeving on here. In most cases, when this happens, we tell them, get a pigtail set, you will never have to pay for that again. So if your fly lines do not have pigtails, I highly suggest add pigtails to your fly lines. That will take all the wear and tear off of the ends of your lines and you won't have to cut those or, uh, or, or get them re-sleeved and everything, which is a cost. So definitely this is a non-sleeve and what they do is they take the spectra and put it back inside of the fiber itself. It's stitched and it can take the load, but you do not wanna have this as your direct connect to your kite. You wanna have some sort of pigtail and it interlocks in loop to loop and now that will take the wear and tear as well as the coloring of the line. Now I want to talk a little bit about the different types of lines. So here you have as I said the Duotone. What they've done is you can feel this is a little bit rougher type line in here and they've gone to a larger uh, pre-making of a braid. So some of them use a, a finer line or a finer spectra before it's all braided um, they have a tracer in here to give you some color on the line. Tracers are not needed. They don't have any strength in there, but some put them in there for coloring difference. But again, most of them have kook poop pigtails, and that pretty much tells you what to connect to your kite. So using pigtails, it doesn't matter really what the color of the fly lines are unless you just want to look good. Um, here's another one. This is a specialty type line. This is called Q-Power. Q-Power line has a very straight inner core. It's the only line out there in the industry where your fibers are not braided as such. You have a straight inner core. I'm just gonna slide this out. There's your direct inner core spectra and that will take full load of that line. So you have a straight and then on the outside they very, very tightly fine braided spectra again around the outside to protect your inner core. So this is the only fly line out there that you can actually knot and use at full load. You do not want to knot an open spectra line like this. When you knot a fly line in spectra, it basically gets down to almost half its load strength. So be very careful, keep an eye on your fly lines and make sure that any knot that's in the fly line itself is removed. If you do not, that will weaken that line a lot. So anyway, you get back to Q-Power, Again, that's the only one that's manufactured like that. 
all other fly lines. Here's the ozone. This is a race set of lines. So a lot of people will get into racing and you can go down in strength. Uh, just depending on, uh, you don't want to touch them onto other things, but again, these lines can take uh, an unbelievable amount of load and strength. They're a lot smaller. Fly line uh, can cause a lot of drag when you're flying. So if you want to get into racing, everybody goes down small. You wouldn't think that those lines would have that much drag in the air, but they do. You can see that this, this Nash line in comparison to a race line of ozone is almost half its strength. I mean, I'm sorry, half its, half its diameter. Uh, Strength-wise, you shouldn't have any problems flying on a race set of fly lines from, uh, from ozone or anything else because everything is overrated. We are built bigger and bigger just to get that safety factor in there, what we call a safety factor, but basically the lines can take the load. All manufacturers are designing a line that can take the load. Some of them are a little bit different, have different treatments on them, um, or come from different manufacturers. But all in all, most of the things, fly lines, you do not need to replace them unless you get some wear and tear. Check your lines, run your hands down your lines, look at them once in a while. If you think that you might have rubbed up, a some, uh, rubbed up against something that caused wear, keep a close eye on them. The biggest thing it wears out, as I said, someone hitting the ends down here on a rock after the bar is rolled up, cutting some uh, hitting some shells or rocks on the beach, um, or anything like that, but you just inspect them. A lot of people write us, do I need to replace them? Not necessarily. If they start getting fray on them a little bit on the outsides, that's usually not a problem. Uh, just little tiny little hairs that are coming out, but look at your fibers. You can push them together and inspect it. If you find an area that it looks like it has wear, push the braid together. When you push that braid together, you can see if the fibers themselves are actually affected or cut. If they are cut, you definitely want to do something about it. But remember, fly lines up in the first uh, two, three, or four feet of a fly line set, if that's where the wear and tear is happening, you can simply have these cut off, re-sleeved, re-stitched, and you're ready to go. Spectra is a forever fiber and it's going to be out there. So again, that's Jeff Howard here at KiteBurning.com. If you have ever any questions about custom fly lines or anything else you want to do on your bar that's all we do and we can help you out and make sure to keep you back on the water anyway that's jeff howard here at kiteburn.com to teach you a little bit more stay on the water